aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that thrilling adventure of whaling days and the search for buried treasure. Returning to Galto Island with explosives with which to blast the covered diamond mine, Captain Dalton and our friends find that Red Mulhooly has joined forces with the privateer, Dirk Briscoe and his men. And behind barricades, Dirk is able to dictate terms to Captain Dalton. Under a white flag of truce, Dalton approaches the brigands and is seized and held captive for his efforts. While Briscoe is preparing to bombard the crew of the Paul Parrot with explosive-laden catapults, Johnny Robbins and little Sue Grange, together with Dirk Briscoe's first mate, Hollings, who has deserted the cause of the privateers, rescue Captain Dalton. Johnny, Sue, and the captain return to their waiting friends when they are amazed to see Hollings running away from gunfire from Briscoe and his men. Hollings shot falls to the ground, and Dalton turns to his rescue as we take up this exciting adventure. Captain Dalton, they've shot Mr. Hollings. He's the man who helped us free you from Briscoe. Yes, and turnabout is fair play. I'm going out after him. You can't do that, Captain Dalton. You'll be hit. I don't care if the bullets are falling like rain. That man rescued me from Briscoe, and I'm not going to leave him helpless when he's caught in a squall. I'm going to save him. Oh, but Captain Dalton... Don't fear, little Miss Sue. I can take care of myself. You all lay low here on the beach. Hide behind those dories. It'll prove sufficient protection until I get back with Hollings there. Blow me down. This treasure hunt is turning out to be a bloomin' nightmare. Rock, rock, a bloomin' nightmare. Rock, yeah, rock. if only it were a nightmare, Dickon. Here, you, you, Sue and Johnny, hide behind this boat. But Ezra, what about the rest of the men? They'll take care of themselves, all right. Hey, look out there. Captain Dalton is crawling on his stomach. Yes, he's almost to where Hollings fell. Oh, I hope he gets to him in time and is able to bring him to safety. I'll wait he does. There, Captain Dalton's reached him. Yes, and now he's talking to him. Hollings, are you hurt bad? Oh, the buzzard nipped me in the leg. I'm afraid I can't walk on it. Well, blow me down. You can't stay here in the line of fire like this. Those blooming louts will finish you off in no time. Aye, but nothing would please the bilge rat Briscoe more. But see here, man, you can't be in danger in your own skin for the sake of mine. That's for me to decide. First of all, we've got to stop the flow of blood in that wound of yours. Wait, wait. Before you do anything, take this. What's in this bag, man? The diamonds that rightfully belong to you and your friends. You see, it was this way. Wait, you wait. I... Explanations can wait. Where's that knife of mine? <clears throat> ah, here it is. Now I'll just rip a slit from your britches. So. Uh, now. I'll just tie this above the wound in your leg. That'll stop the flow of blood temporarily. There. That's it. Uh, thanks, Captain Dalton. It feels better now, too. That's good, mate. It's a good thing these old logs are piled up in front of us. It acts as a protection for the time being, at least. Yes, but Dalton, you can't stay here with me. Those buzzards will be out here after us any minute now. I hardly think so. Not for a while, anyway. They know that the minute they step out in the clearing from those bushes they're in, my men down at the beach would let them have it. I guess you're right. They're most likely planning their next move right now. And yet, we can't leave the safety of these logs here. We'll just have to bide our time. Hold. Someone creeping this way from the bushes. Aye. And from the size of his hulk, I'd say it's Red Mulhooly. Aye, it is Red Mulhooly, the lubber. Well, let him come. I've been waiting for the likes of him. Look out, Captain Dalton. He's aiming this way. Aye, and I'm aiming his way. Did he get you, Dalton? No. Now it's my turn. Ah, and you didn't miss. No. No, I didn't miss. You know, Hullings, in all the years I've sailed the seas... I've never killed anyone or anything except in self-defense. But even so, whenever I was forced to do so, I always had a feeling inside of me that kind of said maybe I shouldn't have done it. But this time, looking out there in the clearing at Red Mulhooly lying on the sand there, I sort of feel as though I've done the world a good deed. Blow me down, you're right there, Captain Dalton. It's too bad Dirk Briscoe ain't a-laying alongside of him. You apparently don't care very much for your Captain Briscoe, Hullings. About as much as I do a poisonous snake. Captain Dalton. Captain Dalton. Johnny, are you mad? What do you mean, exposing yourself to the fire of those blooming pirates? I knew something had to be done, Captain Dalton. Mr. Grange wouldn't let me come, but I got away anyway. I knew you and Mr. Hollings here couldn't get back without Briscoe's men seeing you and shooting at you. So I put this bundle of twigs in front of me, and little by little I crept here. But why, lad? Now the three of us will have a much harder time getting back to our men than before. Well, I don't think so, Captain Dalton. I brought these along with me. Blow me down. Explosives. Johnny, lad, that's just the thing we need to turn the trick. Yes. I figure it'll work this way. I'll light one and throw it up toward those bushes. When it explodes, you carry Mr. Hollings as far toward the beach as you can. Aye. 
Then before the excitement dies down, I'll light another one and throw it. But how will you get back? Don't worry, I'll make it. I'll save one of those sticks of explosives if they rush me. I'd just love to throw it right in the middle of those pirates. What a lad. And a heart as stout as any of us, Captain. Ah, uh, you're right there, all right. I guess it's the only thing we can do. Get ready, Johnny, to light the first fuse. All right, Captain Dalton. Are you ready? Aye, lad. Then here goes. Uh, there! <laughs> Hurry, Captain Dalton. They'll never see you now with all that commotion. All right, Johnny. Let them have the other one. Uh, that's number two. Keep going, Captain Dalton. I'm right behind you. Good boy, Johnny. Good boy. Well, we're out of range of their fire now, anyway. Here comes Mr. Grange, Dickon, and Sue. Ah, oh, that was nice work, Johnny. We saw it all from the beach here. Hey, ah. there, it, there it was, Captain. And we saw you drop Red Bull Hooley in his tracks before Johnny got there, too. And Bill Dredd finally got what was coming to him. These past few minutes were the most thrilling I've ever seen. Oh, Johnny, you were marvelous. Oh, it was nothing. Captain Dalton, as owner of the Paul Parrot, I've made my final decision. What's that, Mr. Grange? Well, the men have made ready the dories, and we're getting back to the Paul Parrot as quickly as possible in setting sail for home, diamonds or no diamonds. Aye, Mr. Grange, that's a good idea, but we won't have to sail without the diamonds after all, thanks to Hollings here. Uh, what do you mean? Perhaps Hollings can explain. Well, sir, Briscoe left a guard to watch the swag while the excitement was going on after the explosion in the cave when uh, Mr. Dalton here escaped. I succeeded in overpowering the guard and made off with the diamonds. But they saw Hollings getting away, and right after that, we saw him running out in the clearing with Briscoe's men shooting at him. Aye, that they did, and they got me in the leg. But I got the blooming diamonds. And here they are in this bag, a fortune in gems. What's that? Blow me down. Just feel this earth quiver. Maybe it's Smoky Mouth again, but it didn't act this way before. And for a good reason, lad. This ain't Smoky Mouth. This is a bloomin' earthquake. I know their actions. So the dories, then, and make for the Paul Parrot. Mr. Grange, see that Johnny and Sue go with you in one of the boats. Here, men, help me with Hollings here. Everybody into the dories and pull the sea. We've no time to lose. Here you go, there. Hurry up. Hurry, Sue, Johnny, you get in this boat. Float her, men, and row for the Paul Parrot. Hold on the belts for your lives. There's a swell coming. Row, men, row. I can hardly hold on. This boat is rocking so. Oh, it almost turned over. It almost capsized the hull that time. Look, gold's a while in a squilder like she had the St. Vitus then, so help me. Look, it's sinking. What, Johnny? The island. Galto Island. Lash me to a yacht home. You're right, Johnny, lad. Ezra, we got off the island just in time. Ah, yes, the fates are with us. A few minutes more and it would have been too late. Look, look, it's sinking faster now. Yes. There's not much left above water. Hold on! Hold on! I was afraid of this! What, man? What now? That island sinking below the ocean is causing a tidal wave. Blow, men! Blow before we get die! Six bells and all's well. Six bells and all's well. Aye, six bells and all's well. But we were awful close to disaster back there a bit, Mr. Grange. Yeah, you're right, Captain Dalton. But let's forget about what's past. We're all safe now, thanks to our lucky stars. We've got at least a part of what we came for in these diamonds. Well, Mr. Grange, what are your next plans? Head for home, Captain Dalton. Then there'll be plenty of time to make plans. Aye, aye, sir, home it'll be. Look, a vast Johnny and Sue with old Dickon over there. The perils of this trip haven't affected them very much. So you see, Sue and Johnny, as I was telling you quite some time ago, the islands in these here parts with volcanoes on them have been known to rise up from nowhere and disappear as quick as they came up. That's just what happened to Galto Island. Years ago, before any of us was born, Galto sprung up during one of these volcanic eruptions, and lo and behold... We saw it when it disappeared. Old Smoky Mouth erupted once too much for its own good. Well, I'm certainly glad we got off it in time before it went under. Yes, but Dirk Briscoe and Red Mulhooly and their men were not as lucky as we were. Aye, lad, but that was no luck. 
When Goldtoe Island with Smoky Mouth went under the sea, that was the punishment for Briscoe and Red Mulhooly and their kind for all the foul deeds they'd done. I'll say they were punished. Johnny, just think. We have the treasure we came for, and now we're heading for home. Ahoy! All hands on deck. Full sail ahead. Rock! All hands on deck. Full sail ahead. Now, Johnny, what were you saying about when we both get a little older? Well, I was thinking that... Oh, maybe you... I don't... Maybe... Rock! The lover's tongue-tied. Rock! <laughs> All hands on deck and full sail ahead. Well, it looks like smooth sailing for Johnny and Sue and all of our friends aboard the Paul Parrot. After many mishaps and near catastrophes, the cruise to Galto Island, which started out to be a whaling trip, but turned into a search for buried treasure, has ended with a great degree of success. A voyage which has seen the end of such desperate men as Altesti, Red Mulhooly, and Dirk Briscoe, and with a part of the diamond treasure as much as could be saved from the vanishing island of Galto, in possession of its rightful owners, Ezra Grange and Johnny Robbins, the good ship Paul Parrott bows nosed westward for the port of New Bedford. And we leave our friends Johnny Robbins, Sue Grange, Captain Dalton, and all the rest for the time being. To them for the present, then, we say bon voyage. And to you boys and girls who have followed the thrilling experience on the cruise of the Paul Parrott, we say happy sailing from now on. Until later, then, this is your Paul Parrott announcer, Dave Ward, saying goodbye. <laughs>